Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You are listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. We are going live tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is DD for Vibes Cartel and is co-accused. Will they be set free? Will the appeal be thrown out? Or will the Privy Council order a retrial? We're coming live starting about 9.30 in the morning until the judgment is handed down. Don't miss it. There will also be a poll. Ensure that you participate. Tell a friend, Fe, tell a friend that we are going live tomorrow morning. Don't miss it. First up, I received that message on your screen from a subscriber. The person said, I would like to know what caused these youths to be so dark. What are the things attracting them to the darkness? Day in and day out, it's evident most of them don't make it to the age 30 when the life changes happen. Who lucky to be in jail are living like insects. A small space shared by twice the capacity of men with poor ventilation, thus very stink. The three meals per day is enough to keep them alive. Why are they not attracted to girls and just focus on self-betterment and move it right along? I can't see how I choose prison over death, over meeting, loving and growing my children. To see what I produced, praying to God I do better than my parents. Meeting a few loves along the way. The few that make it off the island either change them life or them do the same thing again. They need to see that it's pointless. Their understanding of rich is limited and they cannot fathom the understanding of freedom. Their value on life is so little because they themselves are little. The country has to change. Me choose life, yeah, papa. So, Keep up the good work. Spread awareness. You heard that? No, youngsters. Youngsters. I know that a lot of you watch my videos. Choose life. Because once you take on the gangster lifestyle, you stop choosing life. Once you start robbing and killing, you no longer choose life. Dancehall artist, Capitan. He have a song that say, when you're in, you're in, you're in, and when you're out, you're out, you're out. Never get caught going the hoodlums route. <laughs> yeah, man, I drop in a word. But, youngsters, me sure say, when you understand what me I say, stay out. Because once you get in, it's hard for you to come back out. A word to the wise. Any news today? No. In yesterday's video, I told you about the killing of that young man on your screen. His name is Shaquille Forrest. I had said that Shaquille was the 26th child for his father. But I should have said that Shaquille, he was one of 26 children for his father. You got that? Also, I said that Shaquille, he was the only child for his mother. What I should have said is that Shaquille, he was the only son for his mother. His mother is the mother of five daughters. Shaquille was her only son. Shaquille, he was killed because the hoodlum thought it was the owner of the car who was driving it. The mayhem. Also, do you remember I carried a story about that guy on your screen? His name is Ricardo Green, but he was popularly known as Ricky. Ricky, he was shot and killed by hoodlums. Saturday night in Grangel. Many of you, you might have seen this video, but I am sure that you don't know or maybe you don't realize that it was the same Ricky who was killed. Watch this. Ricky Alikim, 
Holy Ricky, holy clad man, really got up over the sun. Man, go straight across the road, dog. And yesterday, the mayhem continued in Grangeville. Both the Grangeville Primary and the Grangeville High School they closed early and students were sent to home. Reports are that WhatsApp messages were being circulated that hoodlums were planning on shooting up the Grangeville Primary School. While we are unable to confirm if that threat is real or not, what I can confirm is that about 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday, Tuesday, March 12, a 36 year old man from Geneva District in the CM Grangeville area. He was driving his white Toyota Mark X motor car along the Ghetto Geneva Main Road. His six year old son, who he was transporting to school, was in the car. The Toyota Mark X was traveling behind a black Toyota Foxy. A 40 year old man and his three daughters were in the Foxy. This man, he was also taking his daughters to school. We are told that two motorcycles with four hoodlums aboard rode up behind the Toyota Mark X. The Pileans, who were armed with M16 rifles, they were going to fire at the Mark X with the man and his six-year-old son in it. The hoodlums, they fired indiscriminately, but luckily, no one in either the Toyota Mark X or the Toyota Voxy were injured. The Mark X, it received gunshot damage to the trunk and the back bumper, while the Toyota Voxy received gunshot damage to the trunk. In that one incident, at least six persons, to include four children, could have been easily killed. The mayhem. Now, in this next incident... This one took place Monday night, March 11, about 7.30. It took place at a Chinese-operated supermarket at Wakefield in the parish of Trelawney. Our information is that the Chinese operator for the supermarket, he was inside when four hoodlums, wearing masks, entered. Three of them pulled guns and juke down the businessman. They proceeded to rob him of over 200,000 Jamaican dollars in cash three cartons of cigarettes and phone cards. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape on foot in the area. Just like that. In this next news story, a 13-year-old Jamaica College student living at Nagohead in the Portmore area, he was shot and seriously injured. This took place Monday afternoon, March 11, about 4 o'clock. We are told that residents... They carried the youngster to the Spanish Town Hospital with a gunshot wound to his groin area. The police, they were called in and the youngster, he told investigators that he was at a relative's house and he saw an illegal gun on a table in the room. He told investigators that he picked up the gun and he began to inspect it. He said he took the magazine out of the gun and he was about to put it in his Waistband and the gun went off, hitting him in his groin. He was rushed to hospital. And by the way, that illegal gun was not recovered by the police. <laughs> Why may I tell you? Now, in this next incident, a 59-year-old uncle, he was arrested and charged after he doused his two nieces with acid. His name is Levi McDonald, but he's popularly known as Ducky. Ducky, he's a plumber living at Saigon in the Barrettown Police in the parish of St. James. What we are learning is that on Sunday afternoon, March 10, about minutes after 3 o'clock, Ducky's 33-year-old niece was at home when she and her uncle, Ducky, they started arguing over water. Her 35-year-old sister joined in the argument. It is said that the argument got heated and Ducky, he doused his two nieces with the corrosive substance. We are told that their clothes were completely 
burnt off them and they were burnt all over their bodies. Both of them, they were rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where we are told that the older sister, Antoinette, she was admitted in a very serious condition. Ducky, he was held by the police and he has since been charged. So, he'll be going to the courts shortly. <laughs> Why may I tell you? Now, in this next mayhem story, we are learning that early this morning, about 7.30, residents, they stumbled upon the body of two men. These two men, they were found along a dirt track near to the Water Commission pumping station along the Don Beholden main road in the parish of St. Catherine. We are told that their hands and feet were bound. Their necks were partially cut off and they had received gunshot wounds to their head. They also had stab wounds all over their bodies. As soon as I get the identities of these two men, I'm going to be updating this story. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final mayhem story for today, there was mayhem in the central village area between Monday morning and early yesterday morning. In this video, I'm going to tell you the motive behind these attacks. Now, last week, Wednesday, March 6, about 12 midday, a team of police officers from the Special Operations Division, they went to First Avenue in the compound area of Central Village in the parish of St. Catherine. A house was searched and bingo. If you look on your screen, that .38 revolver containing 6.38 cartridges and that Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine affixed containing 8 live rounds were found inside a closed barrel inside a bedroom in the house. The police team they also searched the outside of the house and that Narinko SKS rifle with no magazine affixed was found in a knitted bag buried at the back of the premises. As a result, a guy was at the house at the time, popularly known as Brockfoot. He was taken into police custody. Now, this is what we are learning. You remember a story I carried yesterday about a female popularly known as 16. I told you that she was shot. Her correct name is Angela Lee. It is said that when the police officers found the weapons last week, Wednesday, and left the area, persons started accusing Angela that she was the person who gave the police the information. As a result, Angela and another female named Nicola Clark, they got into a heated exchange, and threats were heard. Keep that name, Nicola Clark, in mind. Angela, she has a son named Christopher. He was shot and seriously injured in the same compound area last year. He has since relocated to another area of Central Village. Nicola Clark, who she and Angela were quarreling. She has a son who was arrested and charged by the police in the area last year you remember a story i carried last year where a policeman he was shot and injured in the area that policeman he was visiting his girlfriend when he was shot by hoodlums well nicola clark's son he's currently in jail for that shooting are you following me so like i said both angela and nicola they kick off because angela she was being labeled as an informer. Persons were saying that it was Angela who leaked why the police found the three illegal guns. It is being said that Angela, she's a woman who uses her mouth a lot. You ever hear when somebody say that person they love yap yap? Well, 
That's how persons describe Angela. Early Monday morning, March 11, about some minutes to 1 o'clock. Angela, she was sitting on an old fridge at the front of her gate when it is said that a guy popularly known as Mario. We are told that Mario, he's originally from an address in Kingston. Mario and another hoodlum. It is alleged that they walked up and one of them shot Angela in her mouth. They then made good their escape. Angela, she was rushed to hospital where she was admitted in a serious condition. It is said that about 4 o'clock Monday morning, about 3 hours after Angela was shot, Mario and another hoodlum allegedly carried out another attack. A man named Mr. Paul Housing, he was 52 years old and he worked as a security guard and a construction worker. He, his 45-year-old Kamala wife and their two children were at their home at 7 First Street in the same compound area of Central Village when they were awoken by gunshots being fired and the smell of gasoline. Very quickly, the entire house was engulfed in flame. The common law wife and their two children, they managed to run out of the house without being harmed. But 52-year-old Mr. Paul Hosen, he was not so lucky. He received gunshot wounds to his head and he ended up dying on the spot. The house and all its contents were completely destroyed by fire. We are told that the police, they are looking for Mario in relation to that attack. So, you remember I told you that Angela and Nicola, they were involved in an argument about Angela being an informer. You also remember that Angela's son, Christopher, he was shot and injured last year. Well, another guy was killed in that incident. We are told that the police, they have now named Christopher as a person of interest in the latest attack. It is being theorized that the early Tuesday morning attack is an act of reprisal for the attacks early Monday morning. If you look on your screen, the lady to your left, that's 48-year-old Nicola Clark. Beside her is her daughter, Nicola James. Next to Nicola James is 13-year-old Sora. She is Nicola Clark's daughter. Sora, she was a student at my alma mater, Jose Marti. Beside Sora is Nicola James' four-year-old son, Kadeen Patterson. We are told that early yesterday morning, Nicola, her daughters, and her grandson, they were asleep in the house when hoodlums went there. Opened gunfire in the house and set the house on fire. The police and fire personnel, they responded, and the fire personnel, they carried out cooling down operation. Now, if you look on your screen, there is what is left of that house. When checks were made, the charred remains of Nicola Clark, her daughter, Nicola James, and four-year-old Kadeen, they were found on the veranda. The body of 13-year-old Sora was found in the bathroom. Sad indeed. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Jamaica, criminals, the 
Jamaica, criminals them a mash up Jamaica. 